Good morning students. Today we are going to discuss the general understanding introduction to the two important organic families namely carboxylic acids and esters. First in today's lecture we are going to cover the general understanding of what these compounds actually are and we are going to discuss their preparation and properties of important carboxylic acids tomorrow and then important ester on uh, Wednesday. So it's going to be these three days and we are going to complete our ninth chapter. Today we are focused on understanding the carboxylic acid we have a very good understanding of many important organic families including alcohols phenols ethers aldehydes and carboxylic acids sorry ketones uh, today we discuss the remaining two families of the ninth chapter the carboxylic acids and the esters so let me start uh, first of all, I know that many of you are very much familiar with this group, right? You have seen this group in aldehydes and you have also seen this group in ketones. So what is this group called? It's called carb, carbo, nil. Carbonyl. I just wrote the word carbo in capital and nil in small letters, and you will soon know why. You are also familiar with another group, OH, and you know it's called hydroxyl. The carbonyl group, we have seen this group in aldehydes and ketones. We have seen the hydroxyl group in alcohols and phenols. Now you can observe that I just deliberately wrote some of the letters in capital. So if we combine those letters which are in capital, let's say the carbo and the xyl. All right. If these two groups combine, the result will be C double O double bond O single bond O H. Now this is a special group which is called carboxylic group. Carboxylic group is not a compound, it's just a radical because this valency is yet to be filled so this group is carboxyl carboxylic group another way of writing this group is c double o h both are the ways now interestingly if you just compare these compound with aldehydes the other valency of this group will be filled on this side only so if I can write it, C double bond O and then OH, C double bond O, H, and then the, I'm leaving this valency empty and you will soon find out why. Just see. If the other valency of this carboxylic group is satisfied by just a hydrogen atom, then this is the first carboxylic acid because one carbon is already there. If the other valency is satisfied by a methyl group, then this is the second number of carboxylic acid. And if you take two carbons, then this is number three carboxylic acid. And if you take four carbons, one, two, three and four 
And this is number four carboxylic acid. So one, two, three, four. So the first number carboxylic acid, the prefix, of course, is going to be methane. But we will just not write the E, okay? Uh, here it's going to be ethane. The last E we will miss deliberately. This is what is it? Propane. This is butane. One, two, sorry. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I, I wrote five carbons here. So this is it basically uh, pentane. E is not there. Now, when we cut the E, we can put our suffix, which we use for carboxylic acid, which is OIC acid. So, OIC is combined with the N, then a space, and then acid. So, what is this compound now? Methanoic acid. OIC acid. OIC acid. And OIC and then acid. So, I hope you uh, got this point. The suffix, what? The suffix for carboxylic acid is OIC in a space, then acid. So, all carboxylic acid will end with the OIC acid, like with the one carbon, methanoic acid, two carbon, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, 4-butanoic, and this one is pantanoic acid, okay? In fact, I'm going to write the fourth one. I don't missed it. So, this is how it is. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's also make the sixth one. You might be looking at this that the carboxylic group one, two, three, four, five, and six. You can observe it that carboxylic group is always on the on one side. It is not necessary that carboxylic should be on the right side, it can be on the left side as well. All right. In the next examples, I, I will deliberately make it on the left side. Okay. Now, this is a very simple one. Methanoic. If this is methanoic, ethanoic, propanoic, butanoic, butane, OIC, butanoic acid, and this is going to be hexanoic acid. This, the, the prefix hexane for 6 carbon and OIC acid for the carboxylic acid. Now this is it, okay? This formic acid is most commonly written as H C double O H because the carbonyl group is can be shown like this, okay? This is shown with the CH3 remains CH3 and this COOH, CH3 COOH. Now this is acetic acid if you know. So CH3, CH2, COOH, that's how it is. Both are fine. This is structural. This is also structural formula. Not a major difference. Pentanoid. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5th is my carboxylic group. 5th will, will be COOH. Four, so I go CH3, 1, 2, 3, and then fourth is my carboxylic group. Here as well, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now the sixth is C double O H. Now both structures are seen in the examination and in the book in assignments. Both are carboxylic acid. The COOH can be on this side as well, but then it will begin as HOOC, okay? Um, this can be on this side as well. So this is the IUPAC naming, the IUPAC naming is 
Mesenoic, Esenoic, Propenoic, Butanoic, Pantanoic, Hexanoic, Haptanoic, and so on. But these are the names that Ayupek, once Ayupek was formed, then were suggested. Before Ayupek was there, the names used to come from the sources. As there's a chart in the book, when you are studying the introduction to the carboxylic acid, it is, you will find out, uh, it will be on page number 204, there's a chart in our textbook, which you should see. Maybe you will find uh, page 204. That chart will reveal to you, my friends, the common naming where they came from. So the methanoic acid was previously obtained from the, by the distillation of ants. So the ants in the Latin word, the main language of that time, it was called, uh, they were called as formicas. So formica was the source, it was, it's called as the formic acid, the common name, okay. Acetum, vinegar, in the language of that time, it was called acetum, main, uh, com, um, the uh, major compo uh, component of acid, uh, vinegar, acetum was this ethanoic acid. So it's mo most commonly called acetic acid by their source. The propanoic OIC acid, but commonly it is called propionic, propionic acid. Now I want you to focus here. The difference, propanoic, noic, propanopenoic, okay, propionic, now penoic and pionic. Now this penoic is the uh, Ayupic name and pionic is a common name. Students can make a mistake in this one. The propanoic is a Ayupic name, uh, propa, propane is a prefix for three carbon and OIC acid for the suffix for carboxylic acids. But the word propionic is the combination of two words, the pro first and pions fats, because they were found in fats, the propion, it came from there. Next, the butanoic, I'll miss this, I come here, butanoic is called butyric. Now butyric acid, this is the common name, butter, it is, a, a, Latin name from there. The fifth one is called Valeric. Valeric acid. Now, Valera kind of plants, the same family maybe like the aloe vera. <laughs> I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but yeah. This is the common name, Valeric, and Pentanoic is the Ayupic name. And the sixth one is called Caproic. Cap Roic, okay, um, cap roic acid. Now this is OIC acid, but it's not. It's not uh, are you picking? It's a common name. Capper means goat. If you know Capricorns, goat. So it was found from goat milk. So hexen hexenoic acid is also called caproic acid. So now the name for mic acid. Every, anything which can convert to formic acid, the form, prefix form is used with them. Like why you call formaldehyde formaldehyde? Because they can make formic acid, all right? Form is with the carboxylic acid with one carbon, all right? And then you say acetic acid, acetaldehyde, you know? Even ethyne is called acetylene because acetylene can convert to a, a acetic acid. And it can convert to acetaldehyde, and then acetaldehyde can convert to acid. So the names propionaldehyde, propionic acid, propionaldehyde, valeric acid, valeraldehyde, butyric acid, butyraldehyde, caproic acid will be capraldehyde. So aldehydes can convert to carboxylic acid. That's why these names are used with the aldehydes as well. I hope it's easy for you, the naming of carboxylic acid. Now, let's go towards the numbering and how can we write the full name for the uh, organic compound if in it's like that. It's easy because the carboxylic group is always on one side. So, there is no worry, okay? 
Let me make for you this. H O C double bond O C H C H two and let's say bromine. Let me make a CH two and the bromine. Now this one is also carboxylic acid. Difference is that I have put the uh, C O O H on the right side. Well, it doesn't matter. If it is on the right side, the numbering begins from the right side. If it is on the left side, the numbering begins from the left, left side. So no big deal. Almost same thing. And the carboxylic group, the carbon group, carbon is always number one. So it's one, two, three, and four. Right? Bromine, my friend, Asghar Ali was asking me why not bromine is in the chain. Bromine is not the numbering the longest chain constitute of only carbon atoms. So, one, two, three, four, and or five, okay? Now, the alphabetical order, uh, don't make mistake, alphabetical order should always be uh, given importance. So, four, four comma four hyphen dibromo, dibromo. 4 carbon, 2 bromo, 4 comma 4 dibromo. What else we have? We also have 2 methyl. So we have here, these are our branches. CH3, Br, and Br. It can't be 5, okay? Explained. 4, 4 dibromo first, alphabetical order. 4, 4 dibromo. And now how many carbon are there? 4. So butanoic acid, space, butanoic acid. Easy, very easy. Because you're not worried about which side you have to number from. Because when you are worried about which side to number from, this is where you make mistake. So if you're numbering from one side, and that's the, always the, the rule, then you are not, not going to get confused in it at all. Like it's impossible to get confused in it because the numbering is from one side only. So that's it. Very simple carboxylic acid. Very very simple. Um, we can add something more here if you want me to do it. I I will now make this group on this side. Okay, so I can go CH three three. C, sorry, no H, CH2, C, double bond O, and then OH. This is also carboxylic acid, doesn't matter, okay? Just expand it correctly. So we would write this C here, this CH2 goes here, this O can, you can push it and back up, it doesn't matter, you can just count from here. Three methyl groups, methyl, methyl, and methyl. Guys, number of the chain, carbonyl carbon is always number one, two, three. This time four, this is counted because this is carbon atom. So obviously now you can see you have only two branches and both are at number three. So can you guess the name? Three comma three and then dimethyl with four carbon is going to be butane noic acid it's not a big deal it's like very very easy to do okay i hope you have understood this one all right so carboxylic acids are rather easy because they are the numbering is much easier okay let me try a few more examples for you okay let's say i have ch3 and then ch and they is I put a branch C2H5 and then I write CH2 and then CH and then I put here OH and then I write C double bond O and then OH. Now this again comes the group. Expansion of the chain is required. So to expand this chain, we write uh, this CH3 here and then we write CH. Now we have C2H5. So we how we expand? I have taught you already. It is CH2 and CH3. And then this way, 
is called CH2, CH, there's an OH. You can again fix it or let it be like this. It doesn't matter anything. So now, longest chain, one, two, three, four. How about five or this way? Five, six. Here we go. The longest chain is taken. So now we have a uh, very simple two hydroxy four methyl. So hydroxy H comes before M. So it's going to be two hydroxy and then four methyl. This time six carbon. So hexa noic acid. We can, we can make these compounds in the skeletal structure as well. Like for this one, there are four carbon. So uh, OH is on one side. This is one carbon. This one, one, uh, two, one, two, three. This is carbon. This is OH. This, this one carbon, okay? One, two, three, four. Now, four has two bromos, okay? So we can uh, go like this, a bromo here and a bromo here on the fourth carbon. On the second carbon, we can just make this line, which shows CH3, and we can make the double bond O for the carboxylic group. Here, there are four again. So I'll just simply make four carbon, uh, one, one, two, three, four, and this is bonded to OH. However, there is a, okay. Now one, two, three, four, three. This is gonna be three, three, dimethyl. Here we have six carbon. So I'll make one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the six carbon is bonded with double bond O. This is also a way. You can put the double bond O up and OH down, doesn't matter. Two, one, two, two hydroxy, we must write. And four, one, two, three, four methyl. We don't write CH3, so it doesn't matter. So this is a simple way to write skeletal structure of the carboxylic acids. No big deal. Uh, longest chain, numbering the chain. And the things are like very much uncomplicated in the case of carboxylic groups. But now I want to introduce you to another, uh, when the two carboxylic groups are present. Let's say C double bond O, OH. C double bond O, OH. Now how will you name it? In the same way, you can say OH, C double bond O, C, H, CH3, CH, C2H5, C double bond O, OH. No problem. These are containing double carboxylic group. So this one, 1, 2, just two carbon, no branches. So ethane, E, Ten, no oic, no no dioic. This is ethane dioic acid. All right, this is one two. Here we can see that numbering can go anywhere. Sm uh, smaller chain uh, branch preferred. One two three four. If this is ethane dioic acid, this is butane dioic acid. Difference is that you have to mention first the branches, the name of the branches. So ethyl comes from ethyl. So it's going to be 3 ethyl, 2 methyl, and butanoic. Butanoic acid. So it's also the same, but just the oic is, is there. We can make these compound like this, and that's very interesting because you can see uh, two carbon, okay? This is one carbon bonded to double bond O. This is second carbon bonded to double bond O. And they both have OH. 
This is the ethane dioic acid. Ethane dioic acid is commonly used in laboratory. Uh, we all have used it. It's called oxalic acid. Sometimes we write it like this, sometimes we write it like this. Uh, C double O H, and then we just write here 2. That's also ethane dioic acid. Or we can write like this here C double O H bonded to C double O H. That's also oxalic acid. So oxalic acid is a common compound. And this is eth 3 eth ethyl, 2 methyl, and butanoic, butane dioic acid. So with two carboxylic groups, it becomes dioic acid. It's easy? It's very, very easy. Okay. Now, to write a name from a structure follows previous rules, so it's easy. To write a structure from a name is even easier. Okay. It's, it's like a lot easier than this because you have to uh, just number, uh, draw as many carbon as the name suggests, okay? And then, and then things follow, all right? So let's say I have to write 3-chloro, okay? And 2-hydroxy. Okay, and let let me go uh, pentanoic acid, or valeric acid, common name pentanoic acid. In that case, I must make five carbons. So I make one, two, three, four, five, and I know the first carbon will have the carboxylic group. Now two has hydroxy, three has chloro. What else we do? Just fill up the hydrogens. So let us find the valency of carbon atom. This is 3 chloro, 2 hydroxy, and pentanoic acid. No big deal. Now, there's a, a common name here uh, technique the alpha beta naming, you know. In the alpha beta naming, you don't include this as a first carbon, you start from this alpha carbon. Alpha, beta, and gamma. So in that naming, it's going to be um, beta chloro, alpha hydroxy. Now five carbon valeric acid. For common naming, you write propionic instead of propanoic. You write butyric instead of butanoic. You write valeric for pentanoic and you write caproic for hexanoic acid. Now in this case here you can uh, simply uh, use the two times hydroxy groups or however you want to name it. It's like very very easy. So this is the uh, naming for the carboxylic acid. I think we have done enough here. And now we can jump to the homework section. Homework is the assignment, page number 212. And in the third question, we've been doing this question for a pretty long time now. The question number 26, 26 is carboxylic, 27 is carboxylic, 28 and up to 29. So this is, this is the structures. These are the structures which you have to draw from the names. On page 213 and 214, in the question 4, there are structures. The, this is structure number 16 to structure number 20. These are carboxylic acids. So I want you to try naming the alpha beta way i want you to write the naming with the with the common iupac naming way and i also want you to write this structure for carboxylic acids so you can master this and it might help you one day so this is the naming and introduction to carboxylic acid i hope you have understood it now we can move to the ester the last but not the least 
okay introduction to esters now ester is another family of organic compounds just like ketones are for aldehydes esters are for carboxylic acids like in carboxylic acids the one valency is satisfied by uh, carbon atom and other valency there is a OH group this is the carboxylic group if you know okay this is carbonyl and this is hydroxyl now in this case this is carbo Auxilic group okay where there's a carbon on this side and it continues if this H is taken out and replaced with R another carbon atom then it will become C double bond O and then just O and this valence will also be open this is ester group Okay, esters like ethers, okay, or ketones, there's a, in between there, they have a group. The group is in the center. Both sides can have carbon. This side will have carbon. This side have, might have carbon. And the first may be just hydrogen. So, esters are basically uh, a form of carboxylic acids in which the uh, valency of the carboxylic group is satisfied with carbon on both sides all right so if r c o o h is the carboxylic acid then r c o o r is the ester group so in carboxylic group you can see R C O O H in the ester group, see that R C O O R, where R is the alkyl, can be methyl, ethyl, and so on and so forth. So I hope you have uh, understood it. Let's not waste the time and go towards the naming. This is our ester group. This side we put a methyl, and this side we also put a methyl. Now the naming is very interesting. This is named separately and they are named together. The carbon on the, which is bonded to the carbon of the group, to carbonyl group, is bonded with the carbonyl named along with it. Let me name it for you. What is this? Can you tell me what is it? Methyl. That's right. It's a methyl. This is methyl. And what is this? One, two. This is ethane. Don't write the E and replace by O A T E O eight. The suffix is O A T E O eight. Suffix for the ester. So it's gonna be methyl ethanoate. Or you can say methyl acetate. Because two carbons, acete is used, right? So the naming doesn't involve the numbering the chain. There's no numbering in esters. Just the two parts are named separately. The first part is on the right side or the part bonded to oxygen, right? Which who, who uh, replaced the hydrogen, okay? That part is just called an alkyl group, all right? It can be methyl, ethyl, isopropyl, tertiary butyl, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Let me make you tertiary butyl. So this is the carbonyl. This is the oxygen. It is bonded to C, uh, CH3. Now you know this is 3 CH3. So on the top, this is tertiary butyl. Let me make this hydrogen here. Now this is, this side, if you open it, one CH3 goes up and one left, one right, and one down. This is tertiary butyl. This is one carbon. So if there were two carbon, 
it was ethanoate. What is one carbon? Methanoate. So this is going to be tertiary butyl methanoate. So if the ethanoate is acetate, what is methanoate going to be? Tertiary butyl formate. So formate is common, methanoate is IUPAC. The naming of ester is easy because you just have to write two groups separately. The group which is bonded to oxygen and the group which is bonded to carbon. The group bonded to oxygen is named as alkyl. If it is just plain two carbons, ethyl. Plain five carbons, pentyl. Okay, five carbons but one branched isopentyl and it can be neupentyl all right so the 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 carbon which is bonded to oxygen is simply named as an an alkyl group but the carbon bonded to carbonyl group is then uh, its name changes like if it contains one carbon it becomes methanoate two carbon it becomes ethanoate and propanoate like so on and so forth Okay, so just um, help me here. Uh, CH3, CH2, COO is also an ester, right? And then you have CH and then CH3 and then CH3. Now this is pretty simple. What is this group? Is it straight three carbons? No, it's like branch three carbons. So what do you want to call it? Isopropyl. You're right. Isopropyl. And this carbon, how many carbons are there? Three. So it's going to be propanoate. This is isopropyl propanoate. Now, if you want to write this name in, uh, in the common way, it will still be isopropyl. But propanoate will become propionate, the way we use the, for the uh, carboxylic acid, all right? So if it were four carbons, one, two, three on this side, butanoate and butyrate, right? Pentanoate, valerate, like methanoate goes formate, okay? Ethanoate, goes acetate and propanoate these are IUPAC huh? goes propionate and butanoate goes butyrate if you know butyric acid pente no it goes valerate but these are for the carbon on the left side and not necessarily on the left side but the carbons the group bonded to the carbon of the carbonyl group the carbon on the other side is just uh, alkyl so no big deal all right so i can write this compound in a um, structure okay uh, or we can make more compound for this. Let's say we have CH3, CH2, 3, CH2, COO. Okay. And then we have CH2, CH3, and CH3. But these are branches. These are, this, this is CH2, okay? It will be in the chain. Three carbons. So one, one, two, three. And then you have CH2. Then you have CO. Then you have CH2, CH. Then you have CH3 here. And then you have CH3 here. Okay? Now, this is one, two, three, four carbon, but one branch. So, it's going to be uh, isobutyl. This is isobutyl side. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. This is the hexanoid side. How do you name it? Isobutyl hexanoate. For common naming, the isobutyl side does not change the alkyl group. The hexanoate will become caparate. No caparate, why? Because caparic acid. If I have to make it like the structures, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, I'm one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, this is the six carbon, and the six carbon is bonded to uh, double bond with oxygen, also bonded to another oxygen. From here, one, two, three. So this is one, two, three, this is the methyl. So one carbon, two, I'm pointing with the pen and, pen and finger, one carbon, two, three, four, five, and six with the carbon double bond oxygen. The other one with the oxygen here. Then three carbon. This is one, two, three methyl. So very easy. The uh, ester naming is. I I think to me. Well, some student will think that esters are easy. Some will say ester are difficult. But why I like. I I think the esters naming is much easy. Because there's no chain problem, there's no numbering, just the two sides in name them, name them, okay? One side is mostly on the right side, which is just the alkyl group. Other than the left side, which is mostly the OH group, includes the carbonyl, all right? So that's it. For the homework, I will, uh, there's a que the remaining questions on both sides, they both belong to... Uh, the carboxylic uh, esters. So if you do all this and you let me see, that means you have finished the naming of the ester and the carboxylic acids and naming part will be completed. Then tomorrow's in tomorrow's lecture, I will be discussing with you uh, how we can prepare acetic acid what are the properties of acetic acid and how we can use acetic acid. All right. Thank you so much. I hope that you will do the work and you will surely share it with me. Thank you so much. Have a good time. Bye.